breaking news. The Canon EOS R5 overheating is fake. Really, that's not clickbait. It's completely fixable. I'm Tony Northrup, and when I wear this shirt, my daughter says I look like a boat person. Before we get into it, I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes amazing websites incredibly simple to set up, whether it's for your photography portfolio or for your business, law firm, dentist's office, restaurant, whatever, you need a separate website because your social media website just isn't enough. You don't need your customers looking at ads for other places when they're trying to find information about you. Set up your own website with your own domain with just a few clicks at squarespace.com slash Tony. And after your 14 day free trial, if you love it, use the coupon code Tony and you'll get 10% off. Thanks Squarespace. First of all, a lot of people, I'll call them Canon enthusiasts, they're saying Canon explained the R5's recording limitations clearly, and there's no reason for people to be mad about it. I do not agree with this. I think the R5 clearly does not meet Canon's promises, both before the camera was released and since. Looking at Canon's own marketing material on their R5 webpage, I do not see any reference to 8K recording limits. They do talk often about the 8K recording and how powerful that is, and indeed it's fantastic when it works, but there's no mention of how long you can record. Same thing on their product pages. It does not say recording is limited to any particular time. If you look into the manual, you will find that Canon describes that 8K has a recording limit of up to 20 minutes. And then they put an asterisk and they say it actually could be shorter depending on how you're using it. But even that isn't clear enough. In our own usage, yes, when we put it and tested it in a controlled condition, it recorded for 20 minutes, which was what was promised. But every single time I've tried to use it in the real world, it, it stopped way short of that. My first video recorded for only 13 minutes before it shut off, probably because I had spent some time setting up the camera, composing it, changing settings, which you do in any video scenario. And 13 minutes of recording time, even on YouTube, is probably only five or six minutes of actual video time because no on-camera presenter does it with absolutely no cuts, right? But then in hybrid shooting, where I had been shooting a bunch of stills and went to record some 8K video clips, it limited me to two minutes. And there's nothing in the marketing material or manual that makes the severity of those limitations clear. And you cannot assume that potential buyers of this $3,900 camera are going to go through a whole bunch of YouTube videos and blog articles and figure out what actual reviewers have found. They just need to update their marketing material and make clear exactly what those limitations are. For the past few weeks, I have been trying desperately not to bash Canon, but to find solutions for this. I really wanted to say we can overcome the 8K, 4K recording limitations by doing this. I have tested it in the full sun and the shade and found no difference. I have put it in the refrigerator and attached ice packs to it, no difference. I've tried leaving the doors and screens open and closed. I've put a fan on it to try to cool it off. I've attached AC power to it and I bought like a $400 vertical grip, hoping that moving the battery away would cool it off and let it record for a little bit longer. I even bought an Atomos Ninja 5 and the only thing that actually extended the recording time was the Atomos Ninja 5, but that doesn't record 8K. It also adds a lot of clutter and extra cables and an extra battery and I would just, I, I much prefer internal recording. And now that you know how much time I've put into trying to solve the overheating problems, you might understand why I find it a little frustrating that somebody in China actually did solve it. From an online forum called Baidu, a user whose name translates to math class took the R5 apart, had been trying to solve this overheating problem too, but they succeeded where I failed by taking out the small internal battery. There's a little battery in there. You might call it a watch battery. And what it does is it keeps the camera's internal settings in memory state, even if you take the battery out. So it just gives a little bit of power. Your computer has one of these too. And if you take it out, then it forgets the date and time. The user took out the battery and it did forget the date and time, but it also forgot that the camera was overheating. The user in their testing recorded 8K video for 20 minutes. They took the watch battery out, put it back in, reset the date and time, and then recorded for another 20 minutes, which the camera had not previously allowed it to do. And at least according to my understanding of their translated messages, they were able to do this multiple times 
for recording up to perhaps multiple hours, and at least with their copy, it did not overheat. Now, they seem to have tested it with only a single camera, and in their troubleshooting, they had also added some uh, materials to it to help better dissipate the heat. So this might not apply to everybody. I personally wanted to do this with my own personal R5 to take it apart and try to reproduce this for y'all, but I looked at somebody taking it apart and I was like, I'm like a level five electronics repair guy, but I need to be like a level 20 because I mean, if it was a $200 camera, I'd probably give it a shot, but a $3,900 camera, no way. I'll tell you what I actually wanted to do. I wanted to solder in a little toggle switch for that battery so that I could seal the camera back up and then just periodically reset the battery so I could actually record for extended periods of time. I, I'm putting this idea out there because I hope somebody actually does it because I actually think it will remove the limit. What this Chinese user's experiments show us is that the recording is not limited by overheating as determined by a thermostat. There is a thermostat in the camera and it is capable of saying, hey, this camera is getting too hot, we should stop. We all assumed that was the case. It seems to be limited by actual software limits that are just counting the number of minutes that you've been recording, the number of minutes you've been using the camera, the number of minutes that the camera has been waiting, and doing some sort of algorithm to determine how long you're allowed to record for. I know from my own experiments that the camera will not record even when temperatures seem very normal according to my laser thermometer and according to the camera's own internal thermostat. So this makes perfect sense. This is the only explanation that makes sense when you consider all of the experiments that we've done in different conditions and having none of them make any difference. This is a big deal. This means Canon actually had the breakthrough that we speculated. They've actually developed a system that can record 8K for an extended period of time, but they didn't want to release it just yet. Why would they want that? Well, when I found out that Canon was releasing an 8K camera, with proper phase detect autofocus and a full frame system, I said, this camera should be priced at about $8,000. Canon didn't want to release an $8,000 camera. They wanted to release an update to the DSLR 5D Mark IV. They wanted to release a camera for wedding and portrait photographers, a workhorse. So to keep that price down, I believe that they put artificial software limits in, but they didn't say this is an artificial limit. They called it overheating, possibly because everybody expected it to overheat, but that doesn't actually seem to be the case. Why would they want to limit it? Why not just give us all the features at a lower price? And the reason is Canon is already number one in the market by a really huge margin. They are ahead of Sony, they are ahead of Nikon, Fuji, Panasonic, all of the competitors. Most photographers out there are shooting some form of Canon camera, and when they go to upgrade, they're gonna look for another Canon camera. So Canon really isn't playing the same game as everybody else. Canon largely competes against themselves. They also have cinema cameras that real cinematographers use. These usually cost into the five figures. They are more than $10,000, but you can spend a whole lot on these cameras. It seems to me that Canon did not want to cannibalize their cinema camera market by releasing a $3,900 camera that was a little too capable. Indeed, with my experience with the R5, when it's not overheating, it produces absolutely amazing 8K results. And if I were making a film for Netflix or something, I might not hesitate to use it if it actually worked the way you would want it to work. If you're like me and you believe that the recording limits are caused by software timers rather than an internal thermostat, then you can start to think of some solutions. One is that Canon would release a firmware update to the camera that would extend its recording time or change the algorithm in some other way, such as reducing the time it takes to cool off after recording so that you wouldn't have to wait more than two hours to get your full recording time back. Another option is that somebody could hack the firmware. They've done this with Canon cameras before, and if somebody could hack it, then they could certainly remove the software limit. Another option is what I suggested earlier, where somebody figures out a hardware hack that regularly resets the internal battery. It would remove all your custom settings, and it would remove the time and date and all that, but would give you much longer recording times. And I hope somebody who's a little better with a soldering iron than I am explores that a little bit. In the comments down below, I'd actually like to hear how it makes you feel. If knowing that it's a software timer rather than a thermostat, that actually seems to make some people 
really mad. Like they'd be more comfortable if Canon had run into engineering limitations rather than putting in limitations for marketing purposes so, so they could better sell their higher end cinema cameras. I think both are fine, but where I think Canon sort of crossed the line is not being clear in their marketing material just how limited these are and not simply providing us the timing algorithm so that people could better plan their video shoots. Be sure to check out our sponsor, Squarespace. No matter what type of website you need, you can do it with just a few clicks and make it beautiful and work on all sorts of different devices. Squarespace gives you gorgeous analytics that show you exactly how many people have been visiting your website, where they're coming from, and you can even set up a store to sell products directly online or take fees so that you can actually book a client. Check out Squarespace at squarespace.com slash Tony. I promise you'll love it. And when you decide to sign up for it, use the coupon code Tony to get 10% off. Thanks Squarespace. Bye.